to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the bible says in isaiah 43 verse 7 everyone who is called by my name whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him, yes, I have made him. What a beautiful passage from the lips of Isaiah inspired by God that shows that we are created for the glorification of our God. You know, so many people wander through life without purpose, without meaning, just take a, a lackadaisical approach to life and have no real direction or purpose. And yet the child of God is created by God to glorify and honor His name in everything we say and do. Today we're going to talk about that wonderful subject of what kind of life is it that really brings glory and honor to God. We're so glad that you've joined us. As always, our lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ. Those members of the Church of the Lord in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assemblies. Also, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, you can go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com. We'd be happy to make that available to you free of charge. And be sure and let your friends and neighbors know about our website as well. That'd be a great Bible study tool for them. Today we think about that life which really brings honor and glory to Almighty God. You see, that's what God made us for. When I obeyed the gospel, when I became a Christian, I gave my life to Almighty God. 1 Corinthians 6 verses 19 and 20 says, Do you not know that as many of you as were bought by the blood of Christ have obeyed the gospel, that we belong to God, that our body and our spirit are now God's? We've given ourselves over to God, and as a result, we want to make sure that our life brings glory and honor to Almighty God. Paul would say it this way in 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether you eat or whether you drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. The Lord put it this way in the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 16, Jesus said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And you know, as you really think about man's purpose and the meaning behind life Solomon brought it all to a grand conclusion in Ecclesiastes 12 13 let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man for God to bring every work into judgment including every secret thing whether good or evil and so we want to think about what can I do? We want to make this lesson as practical to daily Christianity as we can. And we want to ask ourselves, what can we do on a daily practical level? What can I do in my life that will bring glory and honor to the name of God? We begin by showing that from the scriptures, if we're going to glorify God, we need to live a life that has the main purpose of putting God first. I want to remind you again of 1 Corinthians 10, verse number 31. Paul said, whether we eat or whether we drink, even in things like unto that, whatever we do, do all to the glory of God. If my life and yours is going to bring honor to God, I've got to live with purpose. I want to make sure that my purpose is to bring God the glory and honor in everything that we say and do. You know, when you think about this idea, there are a host of passages that teach us about the dedication we need to have to really live with that purpose. I'm reminded of one that Paul mentioned in Philippians chapter 1, verse number 21. Paul said, as it related to his life, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Do you think the life of the Apostle Paul 
brought glory to God. Oh, you bet it did. When he, when he changed his way of living, when he obeyed the gospel, when he suffered, when he preached in various places, as he went about uh, teaching the gospel, people could look at Paul and notice that change. And when they said, what is it that caused him to change? Jesus Christ is always the answer they pointed to. I'm reminded of Christ's words in Matthew 6, Seek first, there's our purpose, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, as we live with purpose, we're living every day for the Lord and Savior and not ourselves. Jesus said, If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. And so, friend, as we get right down to the basics of, of glorifying God, it all starts by us examining ourselves. Examine yourselves, test yourselves to see whether you're in the faith, 2 Corinthians 13, 5, and making sure that every day my purpose and your purpose, our purpose, is to bring God the glory and the honor in everything that we do. You see, too many times... In this life, if we're not careful, man's pride can get in the way. And men want others to look at them. Look at the good I've done. Look at what I said. Look at how much... Well, that's not what it's about. We want God to be honored through our lives and by our actions. We want people to look at us and give God the glory. Matthew 5, verse number 16. But then let's talk about another aspect that brings glory to God. And, you know, it may not be one that people often think about, but one of the things that always honors God is when we're big enough to own up to and confess sin in our life. Let me show you a Bible passage. Joshua chapter 7. I want you to notice verse number 19. Here's the context. Joshua is dealing with sin that has plagued Israel. As a result, they're suffering defeats in battle. As a result, calamity is coming upon the Israelites. And so they identify that one man and his family, mainly one man, has disobeyed God. And as a result, he needs to acknowledge this and come forward with that sin. And listen to Joshua 7, verse 19. Now Joshua said to Achan, My son, I beg you, listen to this, Give glory to the God of Israel and make confession to Him and tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. Achan's sin was affecting everybody. The whole camp was feeling the consequences of that sin. People were dying in battle. There was God's anger that was being unleashed on Israel because this man disobeyed God. And notice again the words of Joshua. My son, he said, give glory to God and confess what you've done. Friend, when we own up to sin, when we confess it, when we acknowledge it, we're bringing glory and honor to God's name because that's what God has told us to do. Do you remember 1 John 1, verses 7 through 9? John says, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, as Jesus is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we make Him a liar and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all iniquity. Friend, God wants us to confess. That word confess means to lay alongside of. God knows what we've done. He's not ignorant of that. All things are open and naked before the eyes of Him with whom we must give an account, Hebrews 4.13. But then when we lay alongside of what God already knows, we acknowledge our sin, we acknowledge the, the holiness and the need for God to save us. James said it this way in James 5, verses 16 and 17. Pray for one another, he said. Confess your trespasses and sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man overcomes much. Friend, I've got to acknowledge I've sinned. All have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3, verse 23. I've got to recognize and honor God for the fact that only through His plan and His avenue can I be saved. And thank God that if we're willing to repent 
and confess and acknowledge our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all iniquity. Thirdly, we think about in our lesson today on a life that glorifies God, one of the great ways that we bring honor to God is by living a life of purity. I want you to notice the words of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 15 with me as we think about pure lives honoring God. Here's what Peter says in 1 Peter 1, verse number 15. But as he who called you is holy, be holy in all your conduct. You know, if I'm going to be like God, if I'm going to imitate Christ, 1 Peter 2 verse 21, and follow in the footsteps of Jesus, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, then friend, I want to try to be holy as God is holy. And when I do that, I'm reflecting the holiness, uh, the majesty, and the power of Almighty God in my life. You know, when I obey the gospel, that's what I promise to do, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, Paul says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? What do you mean I'm not my own? You were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are His. As I strive to live with purity. I'm not doing it for people to say, look at me or brag about it. That's not the reason. But as we strive, to live pure, holy lives, we are reflecting the purity and the holiness of God. Hebrews 12, 14 says, without holiness, no one can see God. And so we want people to, to see God living in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory, as Colossians chapter 1 will say, we want others to see that and realize God is the, the motivation, the force behind the holiness in each of our lives. Another way that we glorify God on a practical level is by being people of prayer. You know, prayer honors God. I want you to listen to the words of Jesus in John chapter 14 as he thought about the subject of prayer and how it brings honor and glory to God. Jesus said this in John 14 beginning in verse number 13. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. God is glorified when we ask through Christ, through His Son, through the mediator. And so prayer is one of the great ways that we can honor and glorify God. You know, when we pray, we ought to mention and talk about the, the holiness of God. What a privilege it is to come before the very throne of Almighty God. Hebrews 4, 16. How unworthy we are to be in the presence of an awesome God. Luke 17, 10. Jesus said, and you, when you've done all those things commanded you, say, I'm an unprofitable servant. I've only done that which is my duty to do. And so prayer brings honor to the name and the person of Almighty God. But you know, another way Christians bring glory to God is by living a life of thankfulness. Listen to the words of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I want you to notice what the Bible will say in verse number 15. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 15. The scripture says, For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. As I acknowledge every good and every perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights with whom there is no shadow or variation of turning, James 1 verse 17, as I thank God, I'm glorifying and honoring Almighty God. You know, we, we sometimes celebrate, or we do celebrate every year, the holiday called Thanksgiving, where we're made to think about all our gifts and blessings and the many uh, blessings and bountiful gifts we have in this life. And, and that day specifically, we, we think about it and we often thank God for those things. You know, the Christian needs to be thankful every day. In everything, give thanks. 
For this is the will of God for you. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 and through 18. Uh, Luke chapter 11, Jesus, or Luke chapter 17, Jesus spoke about ten lepers. And all ten of those the Lord healed. But then, here's what's interesting about that story. Of those ten lepers that the Lord healed, one came back to say thank you and gave glory to God. You know what Jesus' question was? Where are the nine? Jesus wants us to bring honor to the name of God by being thankful. When I think about everything I'm given in this life, as you think about everything you have in your life, our home, the food we have, the, the vehicles that we drive, our friends and our family, and, and how blessed we are. Friend, I need to take time to honor God by saying thank you. God is the giver of those gifts. He's the reason we have them. Without Him, there would be no blessings in this life. Ephesians 1, 3, all spiritual blessings are ours in Christ Jesus. And so honoring God and glorifying Him by saying thank you is a big way to glorify Him in this life. You know, another way that we glorify God is by suffering with courage. 1 Peter 4, 16, Peter says, if any man suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this name. The name Christian automatically brings honor to God, but when we take that name Christian and we live courageously, when we suffer for Christ, when because of what we believe or what we teach or the moral standard that we hold to, suffering comes to us, friend, God and Christ are glorified by our faithfulness in suffering, by our courage when it's tested, uh, when we have to suffer because someone looks down on Christians for their moral standard, because we believe in, in God and the Bible, that brings honor to the name of God that we hold true to God even in the midst of that suffering. You know, sometimes we have to face difficulty in life. Sometimes we're tested. Sometimes we face those fiery trials like Jesus and the Bible writers spoke about. When I remain true to God in the face of all that, when I don't throw in the towel and when I don't give up, people often ask the question, why? Why did he endure that? Why did they not give up their belief system? Why did they not conform to the moral standard that the world says is right? And then they're reminded their life is governed by God. The Bible is what they're being guided by and they are caused to give glory and honor to God through that and our lives show that. You know, another way that we bring honor to the name of God is by growing spiritually. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3 verse 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of your Lord and Savior. 1 Peter 2 verse 2, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the Word, that you may grow thereby. Just like a baby, when it's first born, has to have milk, has to have that, that precious milk to grow by, Christians, when they obey the gospel and they begin to get on that spiritual diet, study the Word of God, transform their life, Romans 12 verse 2, uh, turn from the things they used to do, Really live a life that is new and different and grow spiritually. That's a life that truly brings honor to God in every way. But then let me mention some other ways that Christians can glorify God in their life. Spreading the gospel is one of the great ways that we can glorify God. Listen to the request of Jesus. As Jesus stood, with his disciples about to depart and ascend back to the Father, Jesus gave us this last request. Go into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. Mark chapter 16, verse number 15. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18, Go to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Friend, when we go out to the world, and we tell others about the remedy for sin, about the cross of Jesus Christ, about the marvelous love of God, how much God loves you, how He wants to save your soul, the great plan of salvation, the power of the gospel, and all of it giving honor to God. Christians truly 
are praising the name of God when they preach and spread the gospel. But here's another way that we also can bring honor to God in our lives today, and that is by giving sacrificially. I want you to listen to a passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and I want you to notice what the Bible says in verses 6 and 7. That's 2 Corinthians 9, beginning in verse number 6. Paul said, But this I say, He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. When we give sacrificially, when we give to the work of God, when we give to the congregation where we attend at as we are commanded on the first day of the week, 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2, friend, we're honoring God through that gift. God has given us so much. What a privilege it is and an honor it is to give back to God and to the cause of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so we want to think about our giving and make sure that we're really giving in such a way that it brings God honor. You know, sometimes, and even an example in the Bible in Malachi, where they were giving God the leftovers. And God said, no, you take that to the governor. You see if he would be satisfied with the, the sick and the lame and the leftovers. God says, give me your best. That's what God wants of each one of us every day in our lives, to make sure that we're really living and doing the things that are right in the sight of God. But friend, here's another way that God is honored and glorified, and that is He's glorified in the salvation that is offered to mankind. I want you to listen to a passage from the book of Psalms. Psalm chapter 21, verse number 5, says this about God and His salvation. The Word of God records, His glory is great in your salvation. Honor and majesty you have placed upon Him. How is God glorified today when men and women submit their lives to the teaching of the gospel. When, when you and when, when we, when we transform our lives to obey the gospel, friend, God is honored through that salvation. Salvation is only available because of God, right? God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, verse 4. God's not slow concerning His promises, as some count slowness, but He's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Friend, God wants to be honored in my life and yours through the salvation He offers to us. That salvation is freely given through His Son, Jesus Christ. Romans 6, verse 23, the Bible says, The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And friend, we also mentioned today, as we have referenced earlier, that one of the great ways that we can glorify God today is through shining the light of Christ in our lives. I want you to listen to the words of Jesus again. In Matthew chapter 5, as Jesus is uh, giving the Sermon on the Mount. He's just finished the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. And then He says in Matthew 5, 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You know, as I live my life every day, I'm not doing it to honor self. I'm not doing it to say, to, to, to shout my own praises or to, you know, to trumpet my own good. That's not what we're doing. As we live our life every day to help those who are in need, to spread the gospel, to live lives of holiness, to, to, to make ourselves a living sacrifice for God every day, friend, everything we're doing ought to point people toward Jesus Christ. You know, we often sing the song, especially maybe younger children in the Bible class, they sing that song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You know how true that is. Every Christian is a light. 
and influence, uh, uh, has a drawing power and points people toward Jesus. And friend, I ought to do my best every day to shine that light in such a way that people can look to God. They can look to Christ. They can see that our lives are, are unique and different and there's a, a joy and a happiness and a peace and a, a comfort that comes through being a child of God. And they ought to walk away and say, you know, I want a life like that. I want to live in such a way that I have those qualities and characteristics in my life. And friend, maybe today you're living a life that really doesn't glorify God. Maybe your life has not been transformed to give it really to Christ. Why not do that today? The greatest thing you could do to honor God today would be to obey the gospel. Are you a Christian? Have you obeyed the glorious gospel of Christ? If not, why not do that today? The Bible plan of salvation, Jesus gave it. It is so plain and so simple. Here it is. Jesus said, if we're going to be saved, we've got to believe in Him. John 8, 24, Jesus said, unless you believe that I'm He, you'll surely die in your sins. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Are you willing to repent? of sin in your life. Acts 17 verse 30 and 31, God now commands all men everywhere to repent. Jesus said, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Luke 13 verse 3, would you turn from sin and turn to God? Would you confess the beautiful name of Jesus? Jesus said, if you won't confess me before men, neither will I confess you before my Father who is in heaven. Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. And would you, to be saved, be baptized? Jesus said it this way, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Mark 16, verse 16. Peter stood up on the great day of Pentecost and said, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And friend, if you'll do that, You've taken the first step to making your life a life that glorifies God. And if you walk in the light every day, as Jesus is the light, you will reflect the glory and honor of God in your life. Our hope and prayer is that each of us will live a life that truly glorifies God. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111.